series of technology tools and programming languages step by step instructions for any beginner for a specific tool or programming language that would give you a good crash course where to begin how to quickly adapt with a strong foundation we will cover the most popular and difficult aspects of many tools and languages as we go today we will cover rust programming language this session is with a malaysian programmer where i am the mentor and clearing the doubt since the content is too long hence i have divided it in parts else the video would have been too long so let's get started uh, see the, this is what a generic function is first of all uh, first of all we've written this function right which has a generic data type so that we are not exactly defining what the data type is passing any data type over here makes it a generic function okay even if you return it to uh, any data type which in this case is t so we don't know what t is but it will return a data type so it's again a generic thing okay what we've done is we've just passed a string and then returned the string as well okay so uh, over here it's a generic function now what you will do as part of that third question is create a similar generic function and uh, maybe do just some calculation or uh, check if the number is odd and even that's the simplest example and handle a error or there is a situation where you divide a number by 0 even then it gives a error if it's not even even then you can give a user user error or uh, maybe try to read a file and then it gives an error so in this generic function you have to create that error and then handle it inside within this function and that's the only question is it clear yeah but how to do it okay so have you written any uh, error code wait let me just go back to the homework and check if you've written that uh, no i didn't hand- I it's okay lah. This one I do it later. No, but I I just need to see if you understood or not. So have you written any code for uh, handling error like this one? I think so. I I didn't paste any. I actually wrote I, because I I do not need to casting or not to check the error uh, the type because when you throw an error, you need to check whether the type is it for generic. No, no, no. That is not the question. Don't confuse with generic and throwing an error. So this question is only just create a generic function and there in that generic function create a scenario where it's throwing an error. Yeah, Simple, the scenario. Just mix up two. Let's say I want to. It's okay, lah. Like, this one I think I do it later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll explain it a little bit more. So write a generic function within that handle. Dividing a number with zero. Okay, this is the simplest example of an error, and this is uh, not even a user error. It is a, uh, it is an error that comes anyways if you div- try to divide a number by zero. Okay, so try it. If if still you can't get it, then I'll help you with the code as well. So can we start with the session for today? So today I'll cover the input output, and basically why. we are using input output first of all and what are the libraries or uh, what are the features that rust or any other programming language provides us in case of input output so the very first thing or very first requirement for using or having input output is when you run a program and ask the user to put input say for example um, i want a user to uh select a number and as a game i can you know give him a uh, give him back a random number which is a lucky number or something like that then i can do that or any user defined for calculation or user defined for marks or user defined for salary these are very simple basic examples of asking a user to enter a number or maybe you can ask uh, the user to you know input the details like name their gender um their age all of these things require a user to input the value and what we can do is use input output for that right 
and for that we have uh, various uh, functions uh, defined by uh, rust one is read and one is write so when we are reading which means we are reading from the console that the user has input and write is when we are writing something so when we are asking the user that okay enter your name so when we say enter your name we can use simple println or we can use the write function to get that and write it to a file right uh, uh, do you understand this why yeah. we are using input output yeah i understand okay can you explain what you understood yeah uh, you need to get some input from the keyboard and then uh, you output is like you printing out yeah. yeah so there are two ways of output one to the console like we do simple println because print uh, basically print is also a function of input output only so one is you can uh, print it to the console simple with using print or you can even write it to a file file which is uh, uh, stored write, write in your hard disk and for that we have two methods one is read so in case of read we will read the file which is already there and use the methods around it and write is a feature where we will write to the file right so print is also actually writing but writing to the console basically so the output will be on the console just explain it in your own words so that i'm sure you got the point yeah you say that write write can in the file or the console read is from uh, file as well or the input uh, okay you said print is to get you uh, input from the user that's what you said yeah either get from the user or read from the file as well. um yeah okay yes we can do it both ways and we have various functions now there's another feature that is called trait and the trait read trait basically read trait is only uh, in uh, uh, rust and is it is basically when we are reading bytes so uh, not reading the entire content as a whole but reading it uh, maybe with a single line or maybe with a single word you know like that and for that we have one of the methods is read line where we will read one line at a time so when we want to print it to a console or maybe write uh, some data from one file to another file we will use this method as read line and what this method will do it will read one line uh, at a time and then maybe write it to the console or maybe to another file whichever way we want it to anything you want to ask there so read line is uh, reading the whole line uh. now uh, reading from the console where we are using a basic standard input let me just uh, explain it with the help of the code when we are reading this line from the console right it is basically an input stream so a very basic simple example where we are asking the user to enter its name right and the user uh, we say enter your name and to print it on the console what it should be we are reading it from a existing file that we have right or in this case what we are doing we are actually reading it uh, we are reading the line that is printed on the console so there are two ways one we can read whatever is uh, written on the console or we can do it on the file so this line basically is what it is doing it is reading from the console which we've already entered on the console so even if the user enters any value we can read it in a similar manner do you understand that it's not hard uh, every programming language is yeah it's it's more or less very similar to every programming language and we are also printing the bytes that it is reading so in this case it's zero because we are reading one line by um, each so when we are reading each line the first line as an index will be zero which which refers to the complete line now the in a, in a similar way how we read uh, anything from the console we can even write it to the console and after the user has input we can uh, you know give uh, maybe a total of something or sum of something or calculation or maybe the total salary or second highest salary something like that it could be anything that we want to write to the console so 
so again for that we will use a method called write and this way we can write it to the right uh, directly to the console as we did for read or we can even write that same data to a file it's just that uh, some methods will or the input parameters will change but the main concept is same that we are writing something either to the console or to the file and let's see how to write to the console first and we'll take an now when we write we have to use this uh, do you see this package yeah 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 okay we can do uh, it in two ways standard colon colon io if we do only till io which means that we are using the entire library for io so when it is compiling it will include the entire thing but if we know that within the program we need to use something specific just write uh, colon colon write so it will include only that part which won't uh, you know take much time your uh, for your program to load or to run so if you want your program to be efficient or to uh, run fast use the minimum libraries that you require for that specific program so minimum uh. yeah okay okay thank you. so the very first line over here we are reading this uh, sorry writing this to the console by using standard output method write and what we do we pass a string over here right that is b1 and then b2 and then print both of them but right now if you see we are not using println over here do you see the difference not even a single println here yeah so uh, uh, all these three lines do you understand how it is actually First, the words unwrap what is the meaning uh? unwrap i always okay, see this one okay so basically uh, uh, if you if you see uh, any uh, uh, what do you say any uh, text outside this tutorial it will wa what it will do it will wrap the whole thing into one so just to oh. just to make sure there uh, any extra spaces or anything Uh, as there are uh, other functions like trim and all we use unwrap so this is like by default for every uh, uh, standard input output you use you will use this uh, unwrap even to write even to read okay yeah i see this quite popular i always see this yeah yeah it is it is quite popular yes you right so in first two lines we are taking two different strings and then uh, in the third line we are actually printing it in right uh, uh, defining a format and then you see b1 plus b2 okay so what this b1 plus b2 is doing it is actually calculating the number of bytes the total bytes and then printing that byte over here and you see bytes. the screen so you understand how this came right yeah yeah, yeah. this is calculated by the uh, number of tutorial side so tutorials tutorials B1 plus B2, so tutorials plus point equal to 15 bytes. Yeah, right. So this whole thing is 15, but if you refer it uh, from starting of the byte, what will it be? 0 to 14. And uh, okay, you understand what this slash n means? Yeah, slash n means new line, next line. New line. Yeah, all right. Okay. So any any questions or it's clear? Very simple, yes. I guess. No, no, hard on this one. Yeah, I think so. Only the syntax is the thing that the syntax, you need to. Syntax, ah, Russ, syntax a bit long, and then yeah, it's syntax is harder than Java already very long. It 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 is longer than Java. But you know, when you use the ID, you just type and it comes out uh, on its own. Yeah, yeah, ID have the auto yeah intelligence. Exactly. So in 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 the ID, it's very easy to do because uh, just just uh, uh, I mean try it in your ID. just write std colon colon and it give you all the options as a drop down and you can select from there very easy and that's why these ids are created so that it makes the life of the programmer easier it also gives you the list of methods or the functions available for that uh, particular like if you uh, write dot here and then leave it it will give you all the possible functions over yeah there. i do a research i they say that uh, intellij maybe is the most suitable and best uh, okay and what is the id you are using right now I'm using C Lion. I don't think it's good. C Lion also a JetBrains product, but okay. IntelliJ is much better. Okay, 
so maybe you can even install that and see if, if it's better because even for java uh, intellij uh, eclipse was there and that is that was a very good id to use yeah, okay. it it was not uh, very uh, it doesn't consume lot of memory intellij is uh, best part is it won't consume lot of memory it won't take 5 gb or 6 gb like ibm products so that's yeah. the best part of using intellij Yeah, IntelliJ is better than Eclipse on that. Just a very um, uh, like you were asking, what is unwrap or what is uh, standard out? Just defining a few functions over here. So what is standard out? STD out is uh, basically to handle the output to stream on the console or to the file or any function. It can be used anywhere. Then it has a write method which is always returning an enum as a result. Okay. the unwrap is a method that actually is printing the real result so that there is no um, spaces or any space around that or um, you know any addition to that the exact result that is where unwrap uh, comes in picture so these are the three uh, main functions which are very important for uh, input output um and then how to do a command line if we want uh, a user to pass an argument in the command line how we can do that we can uh, pass the parameters and uh, pass it to the function and then ask for a command line argument from the user okay we'll cover with the, this with an example let me just show you really quickly how we can use a command line do you see the code and uh, try to understand or probably uh, this time you explain me the code line by it is only two three lines Okay. Uh, first line is uh, first line should be get the argument from the environment variable. I think. So oh. uh, se second line is print the. Uh, second line is. Uh, second line to to print out the environment variable and then. Uh. Oh no no no! Second line is print the environment variable. numbers number of how many environment variable you have and then the number 8 line is print out every environment variable okay yeah. this okay so the very first line what it's doing uh, it is actually uh, defining basically only declaring or defining anything you can call it that this uh, variable cmd line will have uh some command line argument so when you say args which means a command line argument from the standard input right yeah. second line is printing number of elements in the argument which means the length of that so what this line will hold what will be the length of it well whenever you uh, see len which means uh, it is asking uh, or it is trying to uh, extract the length of the data type or the variable okay so that's why number of elements number of elements in the argument the argument is this and number of element because it's using the len function the length function then how to print that same in a uh, in a, you know reading it one by one so that's why we've used a for loop for argument in command line which means that uh, we have to read this uh, run this loop till the argument is there and to command line which means the length of the command line run the for loop till then and this is to print it one by one all right see that negative 1 a 1 yeah. okay 1 1 1 no no negative. not negative 1 it's 1 okay okay so any any questions here uh no as such it's very simple but it's only that you need to know uh what we are using where and Uh, in your program, what will you need? Okay. Let me use uh, also show you a program with the integer value for again the command line, so that it's even more clear. So now try to understand this code and explain it to me. Uh, first one, first number four line is uh, get the environment variable, and then fifth one is uh, print out uh, the numbers of the environment variable. Uh, number eight is a mutable. Mutable, changeable, sum is a sum, and then uh, number nine is a uh, whether it's a boolean flag, uh, 
it's a mutable volume flag, it's default to false. And then uh, there's a looping there. So this looping is like, uh, this looping is like sum all the, sum all the uh, values. So it's doing a, a addition, an addition, okay. And if let's say there's any addition, then the hash rate first argument will be come through. Uh, I think you need to have a number like 30 should be a not, not, you need to add a not in front. Sorry, repeat that number 13. Uh, 13, you need to add a not in front of the, this hash, this has read first argument. I think. This not, this has to be not. Yeah, I think so. Or else it, it won't. Okay, let's, it. let's do one thing. Let's do it both ways. Okay. So if, if has read, read first argument not means if it's true. Yeah. In case it's true, it will go inside because by default we've defined it as false, uh, right? If if we put a not, it won't won't go inside this, right? Because it's for already false. But um, if it doesn't go inside this, then here when this uh, it reaches the code, the code reaches here, it will make it true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So assume like assume follow your code, then the first first time it won't execute, then second time only execute. So if I put a not here, it won't be executed even for the first time. If you execute right, if you put a not, because we come through. Right? Sorry, say that again. No, if you put a not in front, then number thirteen will become a positive, uh, boolean flag. Right, because by default you put it in false, right? Then you put a not, then that's why the line sixteen can be executed. Okay, so I'll do this, right? This is what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's execute and see. It's a type, type, type mismatch. Line. The error was because uh, we are actually referring to a value where, uh, you know, like uh, referring it to, no, wait, let me just execute that error again. So now first it's printing the number line, which means number uh, over here. So command line is only, uh, the length of the command line argument is only one. Sum is zero because it's not entering this code at all, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah not entering. First time not entering, uh, but uh, okay. If like this, uh, then uh, the first. See, first time it won't enter inside this. Second, second time, time when it's true, the length has already been done because it's only one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say. So this loop uh, will execute only once the first time it won't enter the code because it's not true, okay? And second time, by the time it is true, it will exit the for loop because the argument length is only one. Okay. This one is uh, the environment, the value of the environment variable, it depends on the this website, right? Will depend on what? Webs this, uh, the first, the number, line number four, how, how we know the CMD line, uh, Numbers of CMD line, how we set it? Can we set it the value? Okay, so you want me to uh, give it a value over here instead of an argument? No, no, no. I, I mean, it's why, uh, why the, why the environment variable is one, not two, not three, not zero. <laughs> but I think it's uh, depend on the website, right? No, it's it's by default because right now we are not giving it any value. Okay, so let, let's do one thing. So uh, when we are defining this argument, now uh, just take, uh, I'll put it as a homework only so that it's easier for you. Uh, when we are defining this argument, uh, research a little on how, very, uh, what are the various ways of defining this argument. One, where it is taking a default value, that is one which is this case, and other cases where you can add more value and then the length of this argument will be more than one. Okay, so one one will be research how to take that argument or define that argument with more length. Second will be to write a code where it will give you a length more than one. And then maybe you can execute this program the way you were saying. Put a not over here so that it will uh, you can use the argument to add more values. Is that fine? Because if you do it, you will understand it better. Yeah, 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 fine, it's fine. Okay, Wait, let me put that because I might just forget while giving you the homework. 
now let's move forward and if if you still have any confusion while you are writing the program we can discuss it again no problem okay. now let's come to the file input output so when we are talking about file input output it is specifically only talking about the file and not about the console so all the operations or the functions methods that we are using to take any input from the file or writing it back to the file opening a file creating a new file all the these functions that all the operations that we have in uh, uh, input output regarding the file we can use it here okay so the very first function that we have is to open a file where we have an existing file and we are trying to open it so we will use this method of open then uh, if we want to create a new file then we can uh, use this uh, method create so far the library of rust is a lot right if you feel that it's very complete right what do you think about the rust uh, libraries uh yeah it is good enough i mean uh, it has compared so to many java also, it's also a lot of libraries okay if if i compare to java it's very uh, still very less the api very the less, method uh. very less java even for uh, like one package java has so many functions so many methods so many uh, what do you say packages inside one package multiple layer of packages so java is very extensive i i don't know uh, rust is not that extensive yet at least maybe in future they might add more to it but uh, java is very extensive even for io it takes you at least a week or 10 days to learn little bit of io oh okay that extensive so rust is still simple uh, to learn if you only compare about the the api or here i am only talking about the api the api is still very easy as compared to java okay 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 understand so this method of uh, one is open second is create then you can remove the file so even if the file is on the hard disk or a location where you are trying to read it from you can remove the file from that place uh, using this remove file method and uh, then there is append append uh, where you can add a value to the file okay so there are various options where you can do that uh, which means that uh, depends on the argument that you are passing to that append method and basis on that the operation will change we can uh, discuss that at length in the maybe next session then uh, write all will be to uh, like uh, you know writing to multiple files at a go or to writing multiple content at a go maybe like multiple lines maybe writing a paragraph to one file then we will write uh, use write all then the next method is uh, read to string so the uh, the entire content of a file you can read it as a single string and maybe like write it to another file or print it to the console Okay, Java. Java seems like cannot write uh, read a whole file as a string. I I think. Can. Java. Java is like reading line by line, right? Uh, your question is not clear. Can you repeat that? Uh, I think Java reading a file it and it is unable to read everything. It is in reading. Ja it is in reading Java, line by line. Yeah, is it? No, <laughs> you you have a. Uh, that's why I'm saying it's a very extensive API. So, which means that you can read line by line, you can read uh, word by word, byte by byte. Oh. There there is a lot. Like uh, here, they are defining six methods. If you uh, study that at the first time, there will be at least fifteen to twenty methods. Okay. and even then sub methods and then when multiple arguments and uh, multiple return types so okay. the library of java is very extensive so uh, uh, i won't compare with that and any, i don't think so anything that's covered here is not covered there it already has see. all that api okay, okay. and the best part is they are uh, like adding it every 4 5 months so every 6 months you see they have a new version okay, okay. every 4 5 months java releases one new uh, I started with 1.1 uh, uh, of Java, and now it's 18. 
and with uh, one uh, java 1 they have 10 different versions like java 1.1 1.8 like that so the version keeps coming so uh, every time they keep adding the api so it's very extensive hello sir okay so in java we can do all that read or write whatever you are doing in rust we were here right so any questions on these methods or uh, uh no question <coughs> now writing to a file where we will uh, open a file basically and then write any string or any data we want to write to the file we have to make sure that the file has to be on a specific path either the path is in the similar directory where you are writing the program or if it's in an external directory then you have to specify the path okay so for now we will assume that we are reading the file on the very specified path that we are using a program so we don't need to specifically define the path as such okay. package here is again right we are not defining whether we are writing a file or uh, to the console but it's common for both of them and then try to understand the code one by one the first line you see that we are actually creating a file that is data.txt right and uh, we we have already handled that situation that there can be a situation that create might fail right oh, this so one is have, like a, a, we don't need to write the enum enumeration right for throwing error no right this one. no no we are not doing that this, so this is another way where we are handling file we can just uh you know write it in through a method calling expect that there could be a possibility that file creation fails okay okay i understand then uh, the second line is uh, using this uh, instance of file we will use the method write all so write all means we can write the entire content at one time which means if even if we have a multiple line of code here in form of a array or a buffer we can do that as well and convert it to as bytes so that it can write at one go and then again uh, handling the error which means that the write could fail and uh, again another line where we are writing this then we will print data written to the file right now we are not uh, extracting okay, it just write okay. so the fourth line will be executed so which means the 7th and 9th line are executed properly and that's why it is the code has reached here which means that the data is successfully been written and this file has been created so expect actually throw uh the way to handle the error is panic okay. right so okay let's let's try this if i don't uh, do this what will happen right you see the line of errors the compile time error yes it's a compile time error which means that whenever you try to create a file or write anything to a file you have to use this otherwise it will throw an error so for any file to read you have to do this okay. right understood any questions on here let me also do, try to uh, change this whenever you write uh, the code yourself or you do homework keep doing these things also that you know change any any question like uh, that came to your mind that why we are using this expect method or why we are using uh, mutable here change it and see how the function behaves or the program behaves after changing that so that you are sure that you know you understand it properly now you see the error has reduced but again it is showing me that write all warning yeah it's kind of a warning so it's not an error in this it was throwing an error so we have to do it but in this case it's your wish you want it to be uh, to catch that uh, error at uh, compile time you can do that if not then just comment it or just delete it from there it will throw an uh, warning so which is fine then uh similarly like how we were writing to a file we can even read from a file and let me give you an example of how we can do that with the code so in this case we have used io read instead of write okay 
uh in this very first line we are trying to open the file the data.txt that we just created and read this file and then print it so this content will have all the content of the file and then print it let me just execute it something is missing by like to Oh, I think I know why lah. The open there throw the panic error. That's why you cannot unwrap it. That's the reason. I don't think so. What's left? Okay, no such file or directory. Which means yeah, in yeah. the first uh, first time when we uh, created it, it uh, because we are not using ID, it might not be stored somewhere. Because uh, in a proper program, if you run it, it will be stored. So what you do, you do it in your ID. I'm sure you won't get any error. There's, there's no error in the code as such. It's just that this file wasn't created when we first executed it because it's a uh, online compiler, right? So it might have not yeah. stored that file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Just do this on your ID. I'm sure it won't give you any error. Okay. Okay. Because the code is fine, I think so. There's no error in the code. Try it and let me know. I'm sure you won't get any error. But this is the uh, way, or this is the basically syntax to read the file. And uh, again, similar way, you can delete the file. Uh, we won't, uh, we don't have the file, so it might again give us error. But I'll just uh, quickly write the code and show it to you. You do it on your ID, create a file, and then open it, read it, and then delete it. Do all these operations on your system, so you will be clear on that. Right now, it's an online compiler, I think, so that's why it's not doing that. Again, it will give me an error. Yeah, it's giving the same error. So no such file or directory, which which is fine because it's not storing the file anywhere. So, but uh, this is a code you can use to delete uh, the remove file method. You can use it and pass the file name. It will delete it and print this file is removed. Okay. Okay. Understood. Any questions? Uh, no question. Okay. Then uh, one more feature we have that we have an existing file and we can add some content, some data to that file. And for that, we can use this. Okay, you can't get. This also you have to do it on your. Uh, what? what? Uh, can you repeat your last sentence? I think the negative problem. Okay, so I'm saying that uh, if you have an existing file, you can uh, add any content or data to that file and uh, use this um, um, method append. Okay. Again, because I don't have this data txt with me over here, so it will give me an error, but you can try it on your system. Try all those operations first, uh, create it, then read it, then delete it, and again create it and then use append so that uh, when you add data, it won't give you any. any is that clear? Any yeah, questions clear. here? No question. Okay. Uh, let me execute, although it will it must give me an error. Yeah, it's giving me an error because no such file. That's fine. Yes. So Unless you create a file, then there will be a... Yeah, because uh, see, no, you don't have to create it manually. Do it through the code because otherwise the whole purpose will go. So first, yeah, uh, do it just step by step like uh, we did it here. Do this step first. If you write this file, then this file will exist in the directory where your program exists. So do this first and uh, try to maybe append, use append first and then uh, delete or remove or do any other operation or read. Right? Yeah, good. So do it on your ID and tell me if you face any issues. We can um, probably uh, fix it together if there is anything. But uh, for now, I think the code is fine. You can just uh, use the same code to do it okay uh, after append there is one more uh, way we can copy a file that means we have an existing file and we can copy that same file to another location or maybe to a similar location for that we can use this code these are the packages you have to read uh, use read package also write also so we are including both of them and this is the code so probably just uh, again uh, use it on your ID, okay, and uh, see how that goes. This is the the complete uh, program for it. This and this. Copy this whole thing and then 
execute it on your id and see if you can copy a file from one file to another file make sure you try to do all these uh, programs one by one on your id and let me know what is the output i'll give you that as an homework uh, any confusions or questions you have no 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 so fine okay so can we end the session yeah we can end the session thanks a lot Hope this session was helpful for any programmer who is willing to learn Rust as a beginner. Next we will cover more on Rust so stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and keep coding.